I know, I know. This is the 35th video related to Graviton you've seen now. So what's one more, am I right? Anyway, as everyone definitely knows by now, Graviton Lands has become a beast. It was already pretty alright pre-update, but now it's just pure purple supernova power. It's awesome. In Bonfire Bash, Grav was doing real work, but that's not a real test since everything falls over from just breathing. Obviously on groups of ads, it's a complete menace, but even on orange and yellow bars, it was doing some hefty work. And since it's a void gun, it has access to volatile rounds, and there's an easy and overly potent build in there somewhere for you hunters. First off, equip Grav, profit. Over on our Night Stalker, either Tether will work well, but I personally would go with Deadfall since you can just chuck it down and let it do its work for quite a while. Gamblers or Marksman Dodge would work fine here, but if you're not using Trapper's Ambush, I'd say go for Marksman since you can get Invis and Auto Reload on Dodge. Any grenade is fine, wholly depends on your tastes. In terms of aspects, for most content you'll likely run with Vanishing Step and Stylus Executioner, but for harder content like Master or GM content, you may want to run with Trapper's Ambush instead of Stylish for the extra quick invis and team support. Since enemies are a bit tougher to kill, 2 proc Stylish and you may want to save your abilities for more dire situations. For Fragments, you can honestly just chuck on anything. Anything that can proc invis is nice, but not completely necessary since you already got a lot of it. Other benefits like Devour, Ability, Energy, and more Explosions can be good if you want even more Explosions because you can never have enough. It may be overkill though, and this is a build more focused on Graviton fun, not Ability Mayhem, so I wasn't using any Ability Energy related Fragments. Harvest and Starvation could also be a good combo when paired with this season's Artifact, but even in a different season it would still work well since the Artifact isn't too powerful right now. Now. To augment Grav even further, we'll be using every Void Hunter's wet dream. Joe Falcon's Hadabadaka. We care more about the volatile capabilities here instead of the extra damage and class ability region, since getting volatile rounds is all we need. For other mods, anything Void related is what we're looking for. Siphon for orbs, reload is nice, or even orb or ability generating mods, but they aren't overly necessary, you'll live without them. And of course, Surge mods, if you so wish, for that extra good good. Class item is basically anything. A Reaper mod would work synergistically with other armor mods, plus subclass fragments like Devour. Other ability mods are fine, or even powerful attractions, since you'll be dodging a lot and making plenty of orbs. Right now, the artifact also has cheaper void mods, along with the Unto the Breach, Protective Breach, and Supernova combo. So using fragments that can make or utilize void breaches will also give you some more customization potential. However, these are only around for another month, so don't get used to them. They aren't life slash game changing though, so I won't be losing sleep when these are gone. And since we have had void artifact mods for two seasons now, high chance there won't be any next season, but again, that's totally fine. For stats, high mobility will obviously be desirable. You'll likely live with just a mid-ish tier, I did. And I'd much rather go more higher Rezil, Recov, and Discipline, since they do a much better job at affecting gameplay. So, in Meteor content, like a deep dive, this build was destroying everything. That'll obviously happen since stuff isn't that hard here, but it'll perform just like every other build here and in most content. Even getting to the lower levels of the activity, it was still putting in work. Red and orange bars were no problem for the Void Machine, and even mages weren't that bad with the additional volatile power. Without the volatile though, it may struggle a bit more since it doesn't have that extra oomph. But as long as there are red bars close to orange or yellow bars, your life will become way, way easier. This is also a great activity to test this out on because of the amount of enemies around, since the fun of this build does rely on groups of victims. Similarly, with Bonfire Bash, Rav and Jura Falcons makes this so fun. Obliteration, destruction, decimation, purple. I really don't know what else to say except that these two items just create total void mayhem wherever you go, with basically zero downsides. Now, where things matter much more, a GM will make things a bit harder to get going since things have more health. However, Graviton was still putting in work, especially with the extra volatile power to make everything disintegrate. Red bars were still getting destroyed, and even though I had commemoration on, I was still using Gravon Champs, and I wasn't having that bad of a time. 
though it would still be way better to switch to a heavy form. I was just too into using grab because big fun. Plus, since Volatile acts as anti-barrier, Disgrace was just the perfect testing ground since the only thing I had to worry about was living, which I didn't a lot because I'm dumb. Like, there isn't that many negative things I can say about this build, and that's, that is pretty cool, and I probably am just sounding repetitive by now. I guess you could say a drawback of the build is that it isn't for boss damage or basically any yellow bars since it's more of a crowd control weapon. But that's obvious enough since it's a primary weapon and special saw heavies are more built for that big enemy damage. However, since we've gotten the godly Quicksilver Storm, having that as your exotic in GM content is almost a no brainer since it can literally do anything. So which to use? I'll give you the cliche answer of it depends on your loadout preference and situation. If you're on Void, the Grav could be your go-to selection. Same with Strand, but for Quicksilver. But the drawback to that scenario is that Graviton requires you to be on a Void subclass, whereas the power of Quicksilver Storm can be used on any subclass, as well as on every enemy type. Now, that may be an unfair comparison since they are different guns, but choosing what exotic to bring into a GM is important especially for one this season like PsyOps Moon. I was using Quicksilver on a Night Stalker with Joe Falcons on my completions, with my commemoration utilising volatile rounds. Obviously that was before the Grav buff, but even now I'd probably still pick Quicksilver over Grav due to its raw power in both single target and crowd control roles. In some easier GMs like Devil's Lair or Disgraced, I'd pick Grav over Quicksilver since that level of power isn't very much needed and I don't need to be too careful or precise with what my loadout is. But it, again, for anything like a Battleground Nightfall or something that requires you to always be on your game, I'd pick Quicksilver. There is also the other Void Pulse Collective Obligation, which is just a monster on any Void subclass, but Joe Falcons makes it even greater with the easy leeching of Volatile. Get Volatile after Invis, leech it, then use the gun with Volatile, dodge again, and rinse and repeat. A very basic cycle, but one that really proves its worth. So which Void Pulse should you use? Again, this really depends on which you like more. You have Graviton Lance that is a master at crowd control, but will struggle with healthier enemies, with Joe Falcons is just an added bonus. And then you have Collective Obligation, much stronger on tankier enemies, since it has the ability to weaken, make volatile, and suppress any enemy as long as you have access to it but it may be overkill for trash mobs since they'll get obliterated in the blink of an eye. Both are very good options, but may thrive more in specific situations, so take your pick. Since we're on the topic of pulses, I'll throw an outbreak here if anyone may be interested in it, since it is also quite strong. In content like GMs though, you may rather use one of the other aforementioned options, since on its own outbreak will struggle a bit since it relies a lot on nanite creation which are mostly created via precision kills, but also rapid hits and nanite kills. It will only mostly be useful on lesser enemies since by the time you take down a yellow bar, one of the aforementioned options would probably have already killed, or if you just take out a heavy instead. But for sustained damage where you're able to continuously shoot without interruption, this may very well be your choice, but personally I don't think I'd bring it in with me. If you're not planning, don't want to, or don't have Joe Falcons, wow, get a counter on the board for the amount of times that's been said now. You also have the option of, say, Orpheus Rig, if you want to get quick Deadfall Tethers, which will always be useful in any situation. You could also use Omnioculus, if you're using Trapper's Ambush. If you still want Volatile Access, however, you may want to use Echo of Instability for grenade proc Volatile Rounds, and then try to build around grenades and ability regen. I also forgot to mention that Utility Kickstart could also be a good mod to use for Jura Falcons, since getting your dodge back as fast as possible is very helpful for any build relating to that chest piece. And so, that's a look at, actually, more than one way to use Jura Falcons, as well as the updated power of Graviton Lance and how it can be used, more specifically for a Hunter. If you're not on a Hunter, you can still get Volatile, again with Echo of Instability, on Warlock or Titan, but obviously not on demand. If you are on a Warlock though, Nesrak Sin would also be a very good choice since you can get your abilities back pretty quick simply by getting Void kills, which will make procking Void effects way quicker and consistent. Anyway, if you found this at all helpful or enjoyed your stay, dropping a like or sub would be greatly appreciated, 
and not doing that will make you volatile quick, you only have 3 seconds. I'll try to get a look of the new and returning Solstice weapons out in the next few days, but if you're interested in what exactly came in the mid-season update, I dare you to check this out. I'll also leave the rest of the GM footage here if you want to see more of that. Other than that, go turn the world purple, I'm out. I'll talk to y'all later.
send the message, Commander. Excellent work. 